Hello everyone, we are Group 1, the first subgroup of Urban Citizenship Studio. Our group consists of David the Giant, Grant the Chatterbox, Lorato the Commuter, and myself, Max, the AI Whisperer. Our group focused on the, on the subsistence, protection, and affection axiological needs from the Max Neve Matrix. Subsistence deals with caring for oneself, protection involves safety, security, and well-being, whilst affection refers to a sense of belonging. Following data validations within focus groups, we aim to explore subsistence further by delving into the question of what locations in Malusi can be repurposed by Mido to accommodate skills training workshops. Considering the factors influencing satisfaction and impediments, our question stems from the misconception of Mido within the Malusi community. Our goal is to explore avenue for Mido's expansion with enhancing community involvement. These factors contributed to the formulation of our focus group question on subsistence. Through focus groups, we were able to inquire into and explore this question further. The result findings revealed potential locations for expanding MIDO and hosting workshops, notably in Malusi 1 and 3, with a focus on the Vinton Sports Ground and the nursery. Additionally, suggestions included a mobile MIDO setup and repurposing taverns during daytime hours for workshops. Participants emphasized safety-oriented skills such as first aid and self-defense classes. Additionally, suggestions for recreational activities included skills development in cooking, baking, sports, and gardening, to name a few. To engage with the community, it suggested to distribute posters across local shops, near water tanks, and within taxis to promote upcoming events or workshops. Based on the results, possible facilities we explored were community hubs, cultural centers, making use of existing infrastructure and having murals to advertise ideas and workshops from MIDO. The proposed work locations for workshops primarily include Malusi 1 and 3, particularly focusing on areas near Vincent Sports Ground and the nursery. The Women's Opportunity Center is a mini village in Rwanda that was constructed using local materials and labor. This is the first of a series of examples we will use to inform design. The project, constructed by local women for local women, centers on women's empowerment, subsistence agriculture, and sustainable designs, all of which are pertinent themes that can be addressed in Malusi. We also looked at Ubartan as a precedent. The studio specializes in designing community crashes in South Africa, which they then follow up with extensive evaluations of their effectiveness after years of operation. University students were tasked with designing a sustainable nursery school for Uberton within, within an impoverished township, with a focus on addressing the specific needs of the community. Another precedent is this community hall in Port Elizabeth, which hosts multiple multi-purpose workshops dedicated to hands-on skills development and a space for local entrepreneurs to launch their businesses. Further the, further, the president exemplifies similar construction materials and techniques similar to that of Malusi, through which local labor and resources are utilized. This diagram visually represents our proposed intervention. Positions adjacent to Vincent Sports Ground, it emphasizes key components such as local marketplaces, workshops, sports facilities, and a community hub or cultural center. These elements are pivotal in bridging the gap towards realizing a utopian vision aligned with the community's satisfactions and impediments. The interventions speak to the needs of creation and understanding by creating spaces to express ideas, subsistence and participation as it assists with connecting people through, to work through workshops, while murals speak to the need of identity and participation by empowering the community of Malusi while communicating ideas. Through restoring Vincent Sports Ground, we will, we will be creating a space that allows people to connect with each other while developing skills at the community or cultural hub. This establishes an engaging, diverse, and open community space that encourages growth within Malusi. The use of murals will assist Mido with expanding their reach throughout Malusi, and sport facilities will allow for people to share skills and express themselves at a safe, inclusive environment. Due to the multitude of responses related to taverns and the dam, we opted to focus on two questions instead of narrowing it down to one, protection. Our questions were, what can be introduced to taverns to make them safer? And, if the dam were safe, what would you want to use it for? 
While discussing safety concerns, many individuals express feelings of insecurity around taverns, dams, and the nursery. Conversely, they felt safer around their homes, the church, and the community center near Mado. These were our primary considerations when formulating questions aimed at addressing the need for protection and striving towards utopian status in Malusi. Through focus groups, we delved deeper into and expanded our exploration of the question with the assistance of members of Mado and the local community. Commonly raised concerns with regards to taverns included the absence of safety measures, issues with bouncers, and permit-related challenges within taverns. Additionally, participants highlighted that many problems extended beyond the confines of tavern premises. Community members proposed various solutions, including implementing a buddy system, raising awareness about abuse, improving lighting infrastructure, and organizing positive community gatherings within these tavern spaces. These initiatives aim to alter the negative perceptions surrounding taverns and foster a safer environment for residents. We aim to explore utilizing taverns for community events, implementing buddy systems, improving lighting, and considering a hangover house for intoxicated individuals. Case Pavilion's Hangover Tea House uses an existing structure for safety and community interaction. This minimalist approach maintains resilience in busy streets, redefining spaces meaning, and addressing needs of the community. In addition, this precedent focuses on the notion of adaptive reuse, how existing space can be utilized to host a specific program. Potentially in Malusi, this can be incorporated in the existing taverns to allow for intoxicated people to have a safe space to sleep for the night. Further, this SA Breweries program, through a series of workshops in taverns across South Africa, seeks to provide men with appropriate skills and knowledge to effectively help combat crimes closely linked to alcohol abuse. TRP is a partnership between SAB and a local NGO, Men for Development in South Africa, also known as MEDSA. This speaks to a potential of a partnership slash stakeholder approach within businesses in Malusi to help combat alcohol abuse and bring awareness to this issue. Our proposal suggests Taverns host community safety workshops throughout the week aimed at flipping the negative stigma associated with Taverns and rather finding a positive way the community can benefit from these spaces. Additionally, there can be a hangover house, increased lighting, and temporary shelters for recovering users. Our intervention looks at transforming the nature of a tavern space by reusing the existing building as a space for various programs to take place. Community groups such as the churches or Mado can use the vacant space during the day to create awareness to community programs that teach about safe drinking and male counseling. This will promote responsibility among tavern owners and attendees to contribute to the safety of their neighborhoods. When looking at the dam question, people expressed interest in various activities around these water bodies, including sports such as swimming and rowing, educational centers focused on aquatic life and fishing, leisure space, spaces like picnic areas and gyms, and business opportunities such as fishing and flexible market spaces. The dam prompted possible interventions including a bridge or ferry across the quarry, recreation activities like water slides and swimming spaces, relaxation and leisure-based activities like picnic spaces and bra areas. Considerations were also given to the inclusion of a watchtower to enhance the supervision and safety around these water bodies. From these results, we wanted to investigate possible outdoor water centers, public landscaping, watchtowers, and fishing spaces with markets. The main locations these interventions and ideas would occur be the quarry and dams in Malusi 1 and 3. This pavilion by Chat Architects is a floating platform made using a local technique of bamboo scaffolding, which is predominantly used in oyster cultivation in Thailand. The pavilion serves as a seat to table dining experience as it connects local fishermen with people relaxing and eating on the pavilion through participatory activities and sharing of local heritage and knowledge. This purification plant in China primarily focuses on water control and improvement initiatives, unpacking systems to manage polluted waters. Further, it is designed to restore the existing landscape and provide recreational space that promotes safety and well-being. It shows how rejuvenated water bodies can synergistically satisfy various needs. Our proposed intervention is expressed through this diagram, which aims to repurpose the quarry into a vibrant and active part of Malusi. It would include adaptable market spaces, water-based activities like boating and swimming. There would be a fishing platform and a bridge to increase accessibility across, across the quarry. A watchtower would also be incorporated to assist with visibility and ensure safety around and within the water. The dam area is transformed into a safe community environment by making the dam a multi-use community space. 
This makes sure that various needs are achieved synergistically, aiming at subsistence, protection, and participation from local community members. These interventions would assist with improving the safety of the quarry while also fully utilizing an unused space within Malusi. This vision speaks to the needs of subsistence through fishing, participation and idleness through water-based activities, and protection by repurposing the quarry for activities people want by making it more accessible and safer. Our final question was based around the need for affection. How can the nursery be changed to enhance a sense of belonging? What would you want to use the space for? Families tended to avoid locations such as the dams, the nursery and general social settings. Conversely, they expressed, expressed satisfaction with their homes, Mido and the Vincent Sports Ground in Malusi. People expressed their want to travel, visit zoos and be within nature. This narrowed down our scope for affection to the nursery opposite Mido. Further focus groups unpack the question through engaging conversations. Improvements for the nursery included enclosing it with the use of trees or an activated boundary, and further increasing visibility by trimming and pruning the overgrown vegetation. Activities suggested for the space included pathways, a zoo, agricultural farming, spaces for learning, mountain climbing, and a space to recycle, upcycle, and create compost. We looked into facilities that catered for workshops involving upskilling, um, plazas, agricultural farming, spaces for learning, and animal farms. We directed our focus towards the abandoned Boyson's Nursery located across from Mido. VAC Library makes use of an aquaponic system which combines aquaculture, which is raising aquatic animals, with a hydroponic system, which is cultivating plants within water. The library aspect is made from wooden frames and is both adaptive and flexible. It is geared towards an open library for children where they can read, learn about plants, and then engage with the aquatic animals within the system. Feeling the Energy is a Milan project that transforms the historic botanical garden into an energy park using digitally bent copper pipe as an interactive sculpture. The installation features six stages promoting sustainable energy production and consumption while unconsciously contributing to green spaces. This provided for numerous needs to be met because of its interactive spaces which caters to different activities while making the space feel safe for everyone to enjoy. Klong Toy Community Lantern is an intervention designed to combat community challenges and issues through a multifunctional recreational space. It forms part of a larger community upliftment strategy in one of Thailand's oldest informal communities. It functions mainly as a recreational sports facility, but has been designed in a way for the community to adapt the spaces as they need to. The design was done with, with the community, and it was constructed in a period of three weeks. Further, Catalytic Action redefines playground design by involving children in co-designing spaces for play, rest, and safety. This participatory approach, in alignment with Nabil Hamdi, prioritizes children's voices and aims to address psychological trauma and developmental issues. Our proposed intervention is conveyed through this diagram, which looks at ways to rejuvenate the nursery. By trimming foliage and retaining the trees, a beautiful agricultural park space is envisioned. Animal and plant farming are both possible, as well as a space for animal interactions, whilst incorporating a learning hub to complement these. The intervention aims to incorporate spaces for recreational and educational activities, which will provide sense of belonging within the spaces. This will be achieved through accommodating the interests such as playing, relaxing and learning within the natural environment of the nursery. This way, families and friends will be able to comfortably and safely use the nursery together. We propose an interactive space for community growth and leisure, incorporating education centers, skill development workshops, animal farms and agricultural activities aiming to support existing farmers and animal caretakers within Malusi. Overall, the proposed interventions present well thought out solutions that effectively assist in facilitating safe, comfortable and empowering spaces. This aims to meet the needs of the community in an intentional and holistic manner through synergistic satisfiers aimed towards multiple needs.